Okay, so this is going to be a fun project. We're actually going to do some landscaping, replacing the sidewalk, and also resin pebble top. So down here on the end to the other side is about 80 feet long. We had some drainage issues. That's why they put in some extensions here. So I'm having a feeling there's a lot of clay in underneath here where you plan on tearing out some of these shrubs. And just from messing around, looking at everything uh, with what we dug out here on the end, there is a lot of clay. We'll fix that and then down here on the very end we're going to edge that and make that match the front. So let's get started.
Okay, there's a couple of things that I'm doing here with the downspouts. Um, not only am I putting in a four inch uh, drain line on all the downspouts, I'm also gonna be putting in uh, drainage that's gonna drain underneath the sidewalk as well. So there'll be like a center drain where when we put the plastic up on top, the water will drop into that um, uh, as well into our drain line. And then also I put it in these orange stakes on the left and right side so that when we go to put in the sidewalk, uh, when we go to uh, hammer in the stakes, we want to make sure we don't drive them down through our pipe. Okay, so I've been using a John Deere 35G. This was actually one of my first mini excavators that I bought several years back. And this has been a great little machine. Um, I've got a three foot uh, grading bucket on there right now, uh, which works out quite well, but I really wish I had an angle bucket uh, or something that can kind of rotate around. But as you can see, it, it worked out pretty good uh, for us in the project. However, um, we got a new toy. And our new toy is a Don Deere 60G with an Encon rotary head. So I can interchange buckets really easy. I also have a little claw on the top there so I can easily load and unload the equipment. And it's worked out great. So let's give it a try. What do you think? Huh? You good girl? Yeah, good girl. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Dylan? Huh? You just kind of hanging out? Yeah? Alright, so this is my John Deere 60G, and I have an Encon EC206 head on there. As you can see, I can uh, rotate the bucket a full 360, uh, and also have a 45 degree angle. Um, where I can basically tilt the bucket any way I want. Um, I've got a three foot grading bucket on there right at the moment and I can kind of change that head or change that bucket head to a grapple which you're going to see a little bit later and also a 12 inch, it's either 12 inch or 18 inch um, uh, cable bucket they call it. Uh, there's no teeth on it but it's designed so that you can work in the head but as you can see with the EC206 it's very easy to rotate the bucket around and get any angle that I want to uh, get at when uh, using uh, this particular bucket. Now this is the first time I've actually used this so it really didn't take much uh, time and effort uh, to use it either. Um, I did program the controls a little bit different uh, to match up uh, what I uh, felt that was more comfortable uh, compared and there's some um, tools that we'll show you later on some of the other videos on how the EC206 uh, works and I've got a control um, tablet right in the, the machine uh, where I can control the speed and the velocity and things like that so in all um, <laughs> this has been an amazing piece of tool so Let's, uh, let's keep working away at it.
Okay, so I'm sure you've always tried to do this before where you're trying to dig your stone out of the back of your dump truck. Well, being able to rotate your bucket a full 360, um, it makes it much easier to kind of scoop that out of there uh, and get that much easier. And also, you can turn the bucket backside too and use the coal chute uh, to make it even easier. So <clears throat> here I'm just kind of experimenting um, with the head and finding it's uh, working out quite well. So let's keep cranking at her. Okay, so this is where we're going to put that uh, 60G right to work. Um, after I was kind of playing around with this rock down here that the customer wanted moved, I realized it was over 8,400 pounds. Uh, the 60G could lift 8,400 pound, 8, pounds in front. However, I had to kind of balance it on the blade to kind of get it to where I wanted. Uh, and it worked out well. I, I got there, which is, which is uh, all that's important. Now the real the big advantage is with this 60G is I have added what they call an EC206 Encon head and it gives you the ability to tilt the bucket uh, an angle of 45 degrees both left and right but also a full 360 and I can easily change buckets um, without uh, getting out of the cab which is kind of nice. The interesting part was is in doing this is realizing that you, you kind of look at the whole perspective in reference to how you run this particular head compared to a standard angle bucket because you can do a full 360 and your angle you can put it pretty much in any direction that you want um, so that you can even easily maneuver it around and as you can see here I'm cutting the grass uh, quite nicely. And now I'm going to kind of reach over here and grab this 9,000 pound bucket while it's raining. And <laughs> we'll slowly get it to where we want to be. I was trying to do that without uh, trying to scratch up the, the stone either because the customer wanted it facing that direction. All right, so let's continue to test out this toy and get this job done.
Okay, now we're kind of preparing the stone from the bottom, getting the little channels here so we can get the water to flow into that center drain and dig out the edging here a little bit so we can lay our edging. And we got the right length, which is good. We'll get out the plastic. And then the Custer Osmo wanted me to raise this one shrub, so we pulled that out. And I'm going to bring in some topsoil here and uh, kind of raise that up in the air a little bit. And I accidentally covered my drain hole here, so we're going to kind of move things around a little bit to free up that drain hole. And that drain hole is used so that when the 6 mil plastic goes on top, uh, we'll have an area for that to uh, drain into. And then when we lay the 6 mil plastic down, we cut about 12 inches around the base of each one of them so the water can easily get in there so the shrubs can be watered, uh, which should work out pretty good. All right, so let's uh, continue to lay some plastic and move forward. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we have a little drain hole here, so the plastic kind of sweeps away from the sidewalk uh, and also away from the house here and we're filling over the top of the drain hole with a two inch so if there's any water that does land here in this area or on top of the plastic it'll roll down towards uh, that drain hole uh, and just keep everything uh, flowing away from the house uh, which will work out kind of nice all right let's keep going at her Okay, so we pretty much used up the last of our twos, and I wanted the twos on the bottom to kind of go over the drain pipe uh, entrance there, which we have a grade on it, but it's big enough where the stones aren't going to be able to go through it. Um, so we're going to head over to the gravel pit, and on our way here, we're going to stop at Home Depot and pick up a tool that I forgot. And now that we've got that, we'll head over to the gravel pit here and we'll put in some pea gravel and if we go to pull into the gravel pit uh, we just instruct the loader guy that put in six ton there's five and then there's an extra ton there now we'll head over to the way station on the way out and head back and continue spreading the pea gravel
Well, this has been a fun project so far. And now to kind of finish up our project with these pebble stones here, we're going to use what they call a landscape lock. It's, it's designed for mulch and also like pea gravel and things like that. And it's like a spray glue, which is um, uh, rather unique. It's like a resin, which is, is, is nice. It's sprayable. Now, unfortunately, the sprayer that I got from Amazon <laughs> is not the best in the world, but we had another sprayer there that actually uh, worked out quite well. The stuff is, is quite amazing. It's, it's like glue, but when, it, uh, when you stick it together, it, uh, it has like a rubbery type uh, resin feeling. So it keeps the, the stones and the, if you're using mulch uh, in place. So it's highly recommended, and I'll leave a link for it in, to Amazon uh, down in the description below. So let's start spraying this thing down. All right, well, the, we're making pretty good time here with it. Um, however, this sprayer that I have is, is terrible. As you can see, it's just kind of like a stream. You w really want to spray type an effect on it. Uh, it just makes it easier to go on. But as you can see, it goes on white color, but it dries clear. Um, if you get it on the plants or if you get it on other uh, surface material, uh, it will dry clear. Uh, so it works out pretty good. But I also like to put it on thick too because especially around the edge where you might step into it, it keeps everything together. Alright, so let's keep spraying. Alright, well, uh, as you can see here, the last little bit, that was the other sprayer and it was going on really nice. Now, I like to put that landscape lock thick along the areas where they might potentially walk into the stone um, and it just keeps everything uh, nice and even. And as you can see right now, uh, this is drying quite fast, especially in the sun. So, and then if you go to touch it, it's kind of like a, a rubbery, spongy type of effect and it keeps the stones together. It makes things look really nice and sharp. So it gives it a nice sleek look to the actual landscaping in that area. And it dries in about 48 hours. So it's, it's nice. It, and, and it also works for uh, mulch and things like that. Now in here, we had some big drainage issues when we first started. And the couple issues were the downspouts were just running up on top. However, it was directly clay below the mulch, and it was actually tipped back towards the house. And they, over time, they had put more mulch in it, and it actually came above the brick wall, so it was running down into the house. So we now basically took out about five or six inches of that clay, and we kind of made a V underneath the sidewalk so that the water runs down just to the left of the edge of the sidewalk here and uh, that actually catches a drain um, for all the downspouts and then sends it out to that sluice pipe down there on the end. 
but we got a nice clean outlook and we kind of matched the where we put the topsoil and we got some seed in there and just in the last couple days we've already got uh, some grass showing already so even with the torrential rainstorm that we have right after we put this down uh, the grass is still growing so that worked out kind of good it did rain pretty hard where it kind of brought the, some of the stones to the surface, but um, it should be okay. All right, um, so we used the John Deere 35G on this job, as well as a 60G with an Encon head, also an Erskine uh, rock hound to kind of clean up everything. And the customer seems to be pretty happy. And also we used the landscape uh, lock uh, to keep everything, all the stones in place. So if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next project. Peace be with you.